Hello everyone, you're watching the Ram News on ASU TV channel 19. I'm Sydney Moore, thanks for tuning in. The woman responsible for a new law being enacted in Florida made a stop on Albany State's campus to share her story. Albany State University's Criminal Justice Club and SGA hosted a conversation with Sherry Johnson, an advocate working to end childhood marriage. Reporter Shelby Hamm is in the studio with more information. Shelby? Sherry Johnson is the author of the book, Forgiving the Unforgivable. During her lecture, Johnson shared her unique story that touched everyone in the room. The acclaimed author gave an account of being raped, pregnant, and married by the age of 11. Johnson is now a mother of five girls, four boys, and an adopted child. She revealed during the presentation that she was raped by a deacon of her church in Florida. Johnson revealed that no one, not even her mother, believed her until she became pregnant at the age of nine years old. By the age of 11, she was forced to marry her rapist with the consent of her mother. Growing up in this detrimental situation, Sherry Johnson was forced to become an adult at a very young age. To me, I felt like she was a hero to young children to stop all of the, um, all of the cases to get married at a young age. Um, to me, she's a strong woman to even tell her story and be able to give other children hope that they can get out of their own situations. For many years, Johnson has fought to make childhood marriage illegal with no conceptions. On July 1, 2018, her bill to end childhood marriage will come into full effect in the state of Florida. Johnson made sure it was known that her fight won't be over until it is illegal all across America. Johnson also has a nonprofit organization called S. Vaughn Foundation Incorporated. This organization makes it easier for her to reach out to children who have been abused just like her. To read more into her story, purchase her book or donate to her foundation by visiting her website at svonfoundation.org. I'm Shelby Ham with the Ram News. Thanks, Shelby. The conversation with Sherry Johnson was a part of the Criminal Justice Club's 6th Annual Child Abuse Symposium. Albany State partnered with the Lily Pad to increase awareness of child abuse in the community. Information was provided about resources those involved in child abuse cases can use to seek help. Our first topic was the child abuse protocol, which uh, sets the stage for the community response if there is a case of abuse and what each organization is responsible, like law enforcement and DFACS and the Child Advocacy Center, as well as the person who may have witnessed it or anyone that's involved. Speakers also discuss crime scene investigation and perpetrator profiles. Another annual activity on ASU's campus has people reaching out in support of those suffering from mental illness. ASU's Walk Away from the Stigma campaign took participants on a journey. Depending Supporters on started with an opening the ceremony in the Billy C. Black Atrium, then traveled outside for a lesson so on Tai Chi. That, that ASU I'm staff really member Ada Davis gave a courageous testimony of her journey to mental health while students provided statistics about a number of people affected by mental illness. One student says he gained a lot from the event. Everybody here has different barriers that block them from pertaining a certain goal. And from hearing their experiences today, it brought me, it made me realize that no matter what stigma one has, you can always progress through or over an obstacle. The walk away from the stigma program wrapped up with participants writing down their struggles and burning them to signify a new beginning. Albany State University came to life this month in the celebration of its founder, Dr. Joseph Renthroff Holly. After a week of events, the Founders Day Convocation was held in Albany State's Billy C. Black Auditorium. The theme for this year's event was, United for One ASU, Then, Now, Forever. Dr. Holly's family attended the convocation, with his daughter giving remarks about his legacy. This year's Founders Day also brought out members from the class of 1968, who are celebrating their 50th anniversary. And a new addition to the Founders Week activities, ASU opened its classrooms for alumni to inspire current students on their path. A distinguished alumni lecture series was held in various locations around the campus. Speakers included Christopher Pike, the Director of Economic Development in Villarica, Georgia, Erica Estrada, the CEO of a financial firm in Atlanta, and Elizabeth Lovett, a nurse and local business owner. Each speaker talked about their time at Albany State University and how it led them to success. Organizers are hoping this event will become an annual component of Founders Week. 
Saw Week bring administrators and students together in competition. Find out who's smarter coming up. And performing arts students get jazzy in a lyceum performance. We'll have all these stories and more after the break. Once there was a boy who did the same thing again and again. One day he was told he had autism. He got help and slowly learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Albany State's campus is a buzz about this year's Sob Week. Planned events brought out not only students, but administrators as well. Ram News correspondent Rache Jones has this week's Word on the Yard. Welcome to the ultimate HBCU experience. Okay. Let's get it. Hey, if you looking for me, you can catch me on the yard. Hello everyone, I'm Rache Jones and I'm with the Ram News Network. Here beside me is Miss Christina and she is the president of Saab. And I heard, well, word on the yard was, Saab week was last week and it was turn. What is Saab? Let's start off with that. Saab is the Student Activities Advisory Board and we serve as the official programming board of the university and we're directly funded by students. Okay, so what events did you guys have last week? We had an event where we had headshots and resumes. Gave ch it gave students a chance to take a professional headshot as well as have their resume critiqued. As well as um, we had an ice cream social, social on the West Campus that caters to the students over there more than it does the East Campus students. We also had a basketball tournament as well as a DJ battle and alumni stroll off, just to name a few. Wow, what can we expect from Saab in the future? Actually, we have one big, one big event at the end of the semester, and all I can say right now is to make sure you have a nice formal outfit. My favorite event was Are You Smarter Than an Administrator? And that event was exciting to me and my favorite event because it gave ASU an opportunity to interact with the faculty and staff. And at the end of the day, we did win the competition, the students. Our wow. Administrators. Well, you heard it from them first, the president and the vice president. I'm Rache Jones. Stay tuned. See you next time. Thanks, Rache. ASU administrators aren't only interacting with students on campus, they're taking a ride to local high schools for potential students. The second annual Albany State University presidential bus tour kicked off at Monroe High School. Cheerleaders opened the presentation and were followed by greetings from administrators. High school students also had the opportunity to interact with the current Mr. and Mrs. ASU. Students who met qualifications were offered on-site admissions. ASU recruiters are hoping graduating seniors will select Albany State as their college of choice. Coming up after the break, performing arts students will take you on a musical journey. Stick around for more. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. The month of April is always busy for those in the Department of Visual and Performing Arts. So far, there has been two musical performances, the latest being in the Lyceum's combined showcase of the symphonic concert and jazz bands. <laughs> About 100 people came out to support ASU students as they took their talents to the stage. This concert was an opportunity for the students to show what they have learned over the semester. Many performers had solos and this event was unique because the musicians were joined by the ASU Concert Chorale. Don't forget, you can catch this performance right here on ASU TV Channel 19, so keep a lookout. I'm Sydney Moore. See you next time.